are kicking off our first theater review segment called Corner Table. It features legendary critic John Simon and newcomer Justin Brown. Simon, as you may know, he wrote for New York Magazine for more than 35 years. He's also been featured in the New York Times and Washington Post. Justin, he's an actor and director who's just getting started in the critic game. Well, tonight, they look at The Present, starring Kate Blanchett. It is based on a Chekhov play, and Blanchett's husband, Andrew Upton, wrote the updated adaptation. Here are John and Justin from the corner table at Joe Allen's restaurant in the theater district. Today we're going to be talking about The Present at the Ethel Barrymore, adapted from Chekhov's Ivanov, Fatherless, all these other names it had, directed by John Crowley. Initial thoughts, what did you think? I think it's a total mess. <laughs> okay. Uh, and of course it's, it's a six hour script, basically, uh, the way Chekhov wrote it. Mm -hmm. And to reduce it uh, to, to playability, which it's not often that, which is not often the case. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to go much shorter, and in this case, they go under three hours. Yeah, with one but six hours or even five hours of them would have been insufferable. Mm -hmm. It would have been ten hours from anybody else. Yeah. Well, I think the question on everyone's mind is, how do you feel about Kate Blanchett? Bad. Really? Very bad. Across the board, from beginning to end. Well, the thing about Kate Blanchett is she is a very accomplished actress. That's fine. But she is a star. She's very conscious of a star. No. Mm. And she gives you three things where one thing would be best. Um, she cannot do anything very simple. For example, in this, she takes off her shoes at one point for no reason. She puts back on her shoes for no reason. Mm -hmm. And she uses her arm gestures way over the place. She's mm -hmm. not meant to be a windmill, after all. She was sad to watch for the first act. She did this ring of the hands, this sad Chekhovian tragedian that really bothers me. I hate it. We're not watching the sequel. You're not playing Nina. This is a completely different show. Um, and so that really bothered me. But once we got into the second act, and then in the third act, and then finally towards the fourth act, I thought that she was particularly astounding. So I completely disagree. I think that she got stronger as she got more comfortable on stage. My fear <clears throat> was that people would be right and they would think that she's this great film star who can't do theater and won't survive on Broadway, which I think is utter trash because she's a gifted actress who is trained at the National Theater and she's been doing theater more than she's been doing film. My problem with this piece is, is it a translation or is it an adaption? Because he, Upton does this thing where he moves through space between really conversational prose that feels on purpose, and then he goes into this very weird, dramatic, Chekhovian well, place. Let's not mince words. Upton is an old talent. Everything he touches turns to dust, and so does this. Um, but he's married to a star. That's an awful way of becoming acceptable, mm -hmm. because it doesn't really work. And um, she, on the other hand, is really milking everything, mm -hmm. trying to get every little thing out of it. But it's a bad <coughs> script. Uh, it's, yeah. it's bad the way Chekhov wrote it, and it's even worse and the way Upton, mm -hmm. uh, not Upton, downtown, <laughs> although no Abbey. Um, anyway, <coughs> um, it was it was a really, to me, a total disaster. It was visually nonsensical. Oh my God, that was awful. That was that was my problem with this. I I don't think that. I think there are inherent issues in the adaption, absolutely on paper. But what it felt like to me. And what continued to pull me out of the space in the audience was, it felt like John Crowley sat in a room with these designers, particularly Alice Biddage, I believe is her name, the set and costume designer, yeah. and explained in summary what the show was. And then no one read the script. No one went back and read the play and then applied what they read to the stage. It made no sense. They're talking about how hot it is, and yet in the second act they're sitting in a gazebo that is enclosed. But then they're talking about it's, it's complete daylight, and oh my god, it's getting dark. And it's been pitch black this entire time. None of the lighting made sense. None of the set made sense. They overcompensated in trying to make it feel 90s by the props and not by the costumes. The world we were in was just wrong. It was a wrong world. But there's no reason, <coughs> for, no reason whatsoever for putting it into the 90s. Mm -hmm. If you must update it, then update it all the way. Mm -hmm. If you can leave it 
as it was, so much the better, leave it. Mm -hmm. And this kind of neither fish nor fowl thing won't work. But what especially doesn't work is that Augsburg, as the man who is 27 years old, gorgeous, every woman falls in love with him. Instead, we have a <coughs> mediocre actor who is about 57 years old, if he's a day. And so it's 30, 30 years too late for the part. Um, and because he and she have a kind of mutual um, history together acting, mm -hmm. they cast him <coughs> even though he's totally inappropriate for the role. And he's neither good looking nor does he act particularly well. He's nothing. And she is all over the place, which makes it even more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand how this happened. Because to me, it's, you know, when, when I went back and I read the present, it does not feel like it's something that should have gone as disastrously as it did. When you are hanging under your marquee reviews from the Huffington Post and Vogue, those aren't worth anyone's time to have to worry about going to go see this. I, I, tr I sit here and I try to fathom and I try to think about, because my philosophy is you gotta find some good in something if somebody made it. But I have a difficult time even thinking about, and I, wa I wanted this to be good. I wanted this to be good so bad. <laughs> Why? Because I'm a fan of Kate Blanchett. I love her, I think she's oh. amazing. Wow. And I wanted this to be so good, but this is not the part and this is not the show. And I think that the reason she's milking it the way that you're talking about has this inherent quality of her wanting this Tony Award. She wants a Tony, that's why she's on Broadway and this is why she's doing that. She wants a Tony Award, but she's not getting it at all. No. And I'd be surprised if other than politics, she gets a nomination. I would have given her a Tony as long as it clobbered her over the head. <laughs> sure. <coughs> but anyway, it was very, disappointing experience. Mm -hmm. And it does no one any good. It doesn't do Chekhov's re reputation mm -hmm. any good. So, The Present, adapted by Andrew Upton at the Ethel Barrymore Theater, directed by John Crowley. I'm saying it's a no for me. Well, I say double no. <laughs> Thank you, John. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Up next, we will pivot to the world of sports, including an unbelievable matchup set up for this weekend. The Williams sisters battling it out, and also Federer and Nadal. Talk about old times here. And closer to home, we'll talk about trade talks for the Knicks and Carmelo Anthony.